Hey guys, welcome to Sophisticates by Mary. For this video, I'm gonna show you how I made this ruffled fondant cake that featured wafer paper lace. And I'm also gonna show you how I got this top tier to be so sparkly in a very simple technique. So first of all, we're gonna go ahead and cut our wafer paper down into smaller sections. And I'm rounding off the corners so that I can get some softer edges to this wafer paper lace. This is zero grade wafer paper that I'm using. And all you do, simply, you just run it through some water, that's just regular tap water, and put it on a preheated nonstick pan at, on medium heat, and just let it kind of dry out. That's how you get the lace effect, it's actually drying out. And you can get some more lacy look and some more of a um, textured look, I guess you'd say, by spraying water on it as it is cooking. I say cooking, but I actually mean drying. And you'll know that it's ready. Look at all those, that pretty lacy texture to that. You know they're ready when you can actually take them off of the pan without them sticking. Now there I'm actually sprinkling some water on with my hands because my water bottle that I have there, it just, it's, it's not the best for this. It has um, some kind of a trigger to, to where it slowly releases pressure and I need it to spray out a little faster. So I just went ahead and used some, my fingers, clean dry hands, well dry for a minute anyway, <laughs> to go ahead and sprinkle some more water on there to get that more of that lacy look. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and get it all ready. Now I'm gonna set that to the side and let it just cool off. And here I'm using some piping gel, some sugar crystals, and some wide flat brushes. The trick to getting this on here is I have a pre-fondant covered cake that has been sitting long enough to get um, dry to the touch. It's a little easier to work with it that way. Then you just brush liberally on that piping gel. Put your sprinkles, you can use sprinkles, I guess this is sugar crystals, but you can also do this with sprinkles. And use your fan brush and your other wide brush to just brush it on to the cake. I've seen so many different techniques on how to do this, rolling it in your sprinkles, which maybe someday I'll show you that too because this is not the only way to do it. But I have personally found that this is to me the easiest, quickest way to get those um, sugar crystals on there. Now it might seem like you're getting too much on in some spots, but you can dry off or brush off what doesn't stick. And it just gives you the perfect coating of sugar crystals. Now just go ahead and do this all around your entire cake. And I also do only do maybe four inch wide sections at a time because that piping gel can dry out if you don't get to it fast enough and it's a little harder to get it st to stick and your um, your finished look might just look a little bit more modeled if you have to go back and rebrush on some of that piping gel and you know sometimes it still happens and I didn't get a f perfect finish either but you know what that's why they say there's always a back to a cake And then if you miss a spot, you can just go in with a finer brush and just go ahead and put some more piping gel and brush some more of that, those crystals on there. And do the exact same thing for the top and make sure not to miss that corner, the edge. Just sprinkle it on. I think the top is actually easier than the sides, but the whole thing is pretty easy to do with this technique. And just brush off your excess and make sure you get those edges. Once it's had a time to dry and stick, go ahead and put your top tier on your bottom tier with some buttercream. Or you could even use some um, ganache if you prefer. And then to make these ruffles, I'm just using regular fondant. This is satinized fondant. And I added some Tylos powder to it. Tylos is going to add a little bit more strength to it. It dries faster and a little firmer, so it holds its shape better than just using fondant without it. Now just roll this out fairly thin in a long strip. 
using cornstarch to keep it from sticking to your counter and to your rolling pin. And go back in and cut maybe four, in, five different, four to five inch sections out. And I rounded off the corners on this also. Now I just go ahead and put some saran wrap over the top to keep those pieces from drying out while I'm working on one piece at a time. Cause that Tylos powder is gonna make them dry out faster. So you just have to take extra precautions to keep it from becoming a problem. Now I ended up using my ball tool for most of this. I used another tool at first, but I'm just more comfortable with the ball tool just to soften those edges, just to ruffle up the, ruffle up the edges a little bit. And then I just kind of pleated it together at the bottom. Just pleat it up and then you can press down on that that bottom piece because we're going to end up cutting that off anyways all you're going to see is about the top third of these ruffles half to a third now i did rows of about nine of those and three rows of those and this is an eight inch tier on the bottom this was also pre-covered in fondant and i used my steamer there that's just a regular um steamer that you would use to to iron your clothes and I'm just wetting down the fondant to make it so it's sticky so that the next piece, the ruffled piece sticks to the top of that. You can wet it down with water one piece at a time, you know, one section at a time if you want to, but I moved pretty quick. So I just went ahead and added that all the way around. And it will stay damp for, oh, maybe a good five minutes, five, 10 minutes as you work with it. And if, if you do need to add more steam, you can do that too. Just try to keep the steam away from your ruffled edges on the pieces that you already have applied because you don't want them to get too wilty on you. And push, push them good against the bottom and then cut off any excess. I didn't show that, but you can see where I cut off the excess off the bottom of the first row. Always start on the top row also with this because if you start on the bottom, they're going to be backwards. Now is where I'm adding those pieces, those wafer paper, uh, wafer paste, bleh, can't talk, wafer paper lace pieces. I'm just kind of placing them in between the, the, um, the ruffled pieces, just for a little added texture. And I did forget to mention when you put your second row of ruffles and your third row on, make sure that you're kind of aiming them in between the row that you had applied first, just so you don't see through them as much. But if you do see through them a little bit, these little pieces of lace actually help to hide any spots where you might see through. Now I'm just using a little piping gel to attach them with a brush. And then for a finishing touch, I am just adding some silk roses. I wanted to use fresh and I had purchased some fresh, but wouldn't you know it, they wilted. I bought them the day before and they looked beautiful. And then the day of they were soft and weren't holding their shape. So I did have to re resort back to my silk flowers again. Guys, I tried, I tried to do some fresh and they did not work this time. But the wires are just wrapped in floral wire and I just placed them in. And if you feel better about it, go ahead and put a straw in the cake before you place your flower in. Just extra added protection if you like to. So there it is, guys. I hope you like it. So thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch my video. And if you'd like to watch some other videos, go ahead and click on the link to one of these other videos shown here. And if you would like to Check out my other social media. I am on Facebook and Instagram under the same name, Sophisticates by Mary. And please take the time to share, like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so that you know when I upload another video. Thank you so much.
and we'll catch you on the next tutorial.